The next step is the painting, not just to paint the surrounds here, but also the window frames themselves. I'm going to do the frames first. So first, lay down some primer. You don't normally paint the sides here because it inhibits the sliding up and down of the sash window. Uh, but I find that if you paint it with a non-glossy coat, i.e. not the top coat, um, you should be fine. We'll let that dry now, overnight. Um, tomorrow we'll turn them over and do the other sides. In the meantime, we're going to head upstairs to the window surround and paint that next. The primer's had a chance to dry, so now I'm going to give it a very light sand before we put on the undercoat. Just finished painting the windows with undercoat, and now this. We're going to undercoat the surround. I'm going to give them a quick sand to get rid of any rough edges. After that, it's time for the top coat of paint. For the first frame, because there's no glass in it, I don't need to be careful about where I paint. The ends, where they slide up against the, uh, the surround, don't paint with gloss, otherwise you'll find that they, instead of sliding, they'll just stick. First frame now finished, didn't take long. Just about to paint the second frame, that's got glass in, it's gonna take longer. Both window frames now finished with the top coat. Now it's time to do this. The surround has had two coats of undercoat on. I'm just gonna sand down any rough bits and then I'm gonna give it a top coat. Bit of progress on the window with the broken pane. Well, the glass has been replaced by a local glazier who also filled it with putty. I wasn't going to use putty here um, because it takes so long to dry, but he did it anyway. And because of that, we now have to wait for a skin to form on the putty before we can paint it. Um, it can take a week or more for the skin to form in the meantime, I'm going to put a second layer of gloss coats on the window surround. The window surround has now been finished. Two coats of top paint, so it's ready for the fittings to go back on. Um, I'm going to do the pulleys. And for this job, I'm using Miton pulleys, a really very good quality pulley. It's worth paying a little bit more to get a good quality product here because you're only going to be doing this job once. I've made these cutouts larger in order to fit the pulley, so they should slot straight in. You might also find that the holes don't line up. Now if that's the case or if your screws are a different size you might need to plug the old holes um, just so your new screw can get a purchase. Really it's just a question of screwing in the pulleys and you're done. The hole here is too big for the screw. So all I'm gonna do is take a wee bit of wood, cut off a little piece like that, just to use as a plug. It's one done. So now on both sides, the pulleys are done. 